Here's an introduction on the topics that we'll be covering today. With this video, you shall have a knowledgeable insight on the history of image processing and how it relates into autonomous vehicles with digital image processing tasks and their definitions. With this, also you'll get an insight on the computer vision history of image processing in the 60s, how they transitioned into the 70s, and how they continue to innovate and learn new things in the 2000s era. Also, we shall provide you with a backstory on Tesla and how the Model S Autopilot came about, and also other competitors that have made autonomous vehicles. Furthermore, we'll finalize this video with a quick little brief talk about and the methods of the future involving VPUs. We will now move on to a brief history of digital image processing. When we are talking about digital image processing, we are referring to the process of altering digital images using mathematical operators similar to the way that signals are processed in digital signal processing. The image in this case are the input and the resulting images are the output. Processed images can then be used to perform many tasks such as feature detection, recognition, or classification, which are essential tasks to modern day applications of computer vision, especially in the area of autonomous vehicles. Digital image processing dates back to the 1960s, in which the first techniques were developed in the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Bell Labs, University of Maryland, and other research facilities. Its first applications included uses in satellite imaging, wire photo conversions, medical imaging, video phone applications, character recognition, and photograph enhancement. Although image processing was developed over five decades ago, it was not able to advance much because of limited technology and resources at the time. The downsides of image processing during the 1960s was that it was costly to use and very limited with technology available at the time. However, during the 1970s, digital image processing was further developed since cheaper computers and dedicated hardware became available for image processing. As computers became more advanced, they eventually replaced dedicated hardware, and since the 2000s, digital image processing has become the main method of image processing because of its versatility and low cost. With many new techniques that have developed over time, computer vision has branched out from using image processing operators in pipeline to machine learning algorithms that include neural nets and convolutional deep learning. Regardless of advances in computer vision, the original image processing techniques are still relevant for developing image processing pipelines, as well as using some of them to develop algorithm that will eventually progress the advancement of autonomous vehicles. Digital image processing can give us access to more complex algorithm and give a huge performance boost when it comes to these, the tasks that will be mentioned for computer vision. These tasks include image processing for classification, feature detection, multi-scale analysis, pattern recognition, and projection. And before we go into these tasks, we will move on to a history of computer vision. We now move on to a brief history of computer vision. Computer vision is a form of artificial intelligence in which computers can gain a high level learning from digital images or videos. It mimics the human vision system in order to automate tasks using computers that have traditionally been done by humans. Since the subject of computer vision and image processing are closely related abstractions, they were both developed around the same time. Computer vision was also developed around the 1960s by the universities that created artificial intelligence and began as a way of developing a system similar to the human visual system as a way to teach machines visually. One key difference between digital image processing and computer vision, however, is that computer vision is aimed towards extracting three-dimensional structures from images in order to gain a high understanding of the images seen. During the 70s, some of the techniques that laid out the foundation for computer vision were created and further developed, including edge extraction, line labeling, non-polyhedral and polyhedral modeling, the representation of objects as connections of smaller objects, optical flow, and motion estimation. The 1980s took a drastic change since it based its research more on mathematical analysis and the quantitative aspect of computer vision. This included the topic of scale spacing, which is inferring the shape from cues, including shade, texture, focus, and contour modeling. 
In the 1990s, some research aspects of computer vision were more active than others, and one example of this research is the field of 3D model projective reconstruction, which resulted in a better understanding of the idea of calibrating the camera. As a result, optimizing camera calibration techniques in 3D reconstruction for multiple image scenes and multi-view stereo made significant process. In this decade, statistical learning techniques for facial recognition were also practiced for the first time, and towards the end of the 90s, there was a huge change with more interaction between computer graphics and computer vision. These are some of the advancements that have occurred over the time in the field of computer vision. And by combining computer vision and digital image processing techniques, new algorithms have been developed which resulted to be very beneficial for autonomous vehicle applications. These techniques include convolutional neural nets as well as deep learning algorithms. These are some topics that we find very interesting for this class as well as the applications that it has in the future for more companies to develop their own sets of autonomous vehicle as well as this research in this technology. We move on to autonomous vehicles and their backstory. So ironically, trials for autonomous vehicles began in the 50s where most car companies wanted to try it as, you know, a method of the future. As you can tell, mostly around that time era, everyone was interested in futuristic uh, floating cars, autopilots, and etc. So with that, they began trials in the 50. However, autonomous vehicles truly progressed in the 70s, starting with indoor navigation and programming through into the 2000s. However, recently, more computer algorithms being applied to the five digital image processing tasks that were stated earlier have been essential to autonomous vehicles. And, you know, the true pioneer of autonomous vehicles that has actually been able to break the threshold is Tesla themselves. And the ironic thing about Tesla is Tesla actually started off as a performance company. They never really started off as someone that would make autonomous vehicles. Ironically enough, if you know your cars, Tesla was actually working on the suspension system of the Lotus Solis. And after that, it became known as the Tesla Roadster, just like how we have our Shelby GT500s for Ford Mustangs, or if we have a, a Roush Mustang. However, in 2014, Tesla decided to introduce the Autopilot. And the Autopilot is its software that it uses to have the car drive autonomously. So, which is cool is, is the hardware they use in it. So Tesla began equipping the Model S's with cameras that were supplied by Mobileye, and they were mounted on top of the windshield with a forward-looking radar, which was provided by Bosch, into the lower grille, and then it would have an ultrasonic acoustics location sensor in the front and rear bumpers to provide a 360 buffer zone around the car. This equipment would help the Model S detect road signs, lanes, obstacles and other vehicles and with addition of cruise control and lane departure warnings that joined in all together to form the software that we have known as the autopilot. It gave the user of the car a semi-autonomous control of the car with softwares that would the software would receive wireless updates from the actual uh, server that would route the Tesla information and which was really cool because that gave us a continuous improvement, which the software and the system itself was continuously learning because the data would be tracked into the car and the car would transmit the data to the Tesla server. And then the server would take in the data and actually learn from it and see if it can improve its software and then send the update back to the car. And this was huge because it was actually completed in 2015 and then in 2016 when the full prototypes were tested the car went from semi-autonomous to fully autonomous because it has the necessary hardware that was able to drive at an SAE level 6 of safety which included and this new hardware upgrade included eight surround sound cameras with 12 different ultrasonic sensors in addition to the radar hardware that was improved, a cool feature that would apply to continuous learning, which was the updates, but it was fully utilized to its potential. And Tesla improved its drive quality by the upgrades. And in 2017, at the end of 2017, it was released to the market for its consumers. So in our current time, as this video is being made, it hasn't been released in a mass scale yet. 
Unfortunately, there was a fatal crash involving the Tesla Model S where it had an issue detecting a white trailer in a truck. And because of it, it went right into the trailer, fatally killing the driver, which was very unfortunate at the time. Now that we got the backstory of Tesla and the autopilot, we can talk about other car companies that will be competing with Tesla in the autonomous car race. Since Tesla released the Model S, other companies began to follow suit in the autonomous vehicle race, such as Ford, GM, and you even have uh, software companies such as Google, Apple, and Facebook trying to jump into the mix. Which makes this kind of funny and ironic, because if you've known your history, back in the 60s and 70s, nations were fighting towards each other to get to the moon first. Now it's more or less corporations and companies that are trying to fight amongst each other to get to the first full uh, mass-scale marketing autonomous vehicle outside of Tesla. And which was really cool, because Google actually decided to uh, state that it will produce 100 autonomous car prototypes that are being built in their secret lab, their secret X lab. And then also you have other software companies that are fully partnering up with actual automakers to build it, such as like, for example, Audi with their Audi AI. It's been able to give the Audi R8 supercar full fu functioning autonomous abilities, but only up to 60 kilometers an hour, which is actually pretty cool since the R8 is a supercar and you wouldn't expect a supercar to have a fully autopilot on it, which I think is really neat. And then we have companies such as Delphi being able to go coast to coast in a fully autonomous vehicle from San Francisco to New York, where the driver didn't even have to touch the steering wheel because the system itself was 99% accurate on the trip, which is unheard of. And then we have Apple deciding to release a statement saying that it will make an autonomous vehicle known as Project Titan. And then you have your navigation slash transportation company, Uber, that has decided to partner up with Carnegie Malone to build its own autonomous car. So as you can see, that this is a really big idea that a lot of companies are gonna be trying to cash on. And with this sudden boom of uh, uh, companies joining this race for autonomous vehicles, it makes you kind of wonder right now, what's the future for regularly driven cars? Well, I mean, we can answer that for you for right now. As of now, there isn't, outside of Tesla, there isn't that much autonomous vehicles that the consumer will either A, be afford, able to afford, or B, that much of a selection out there, because the Tesla Model S doesn't come that cheap, and it's not something for the average car buyer. So with that being said, until we have a mass scale production of autonomous vehicles, unfortunately, we're going to have to drive our own cars for the current future which is kind of a bummer because I kind of like having my own chauffeur, chauffeur that I don't have to pay for. Now we move on to the, the way of our future because it may not seem that we're going much right now in the autonomous vehicle, but as technology continues to improve and we begin to pioneer into new methods and critical think into new ways of improv improving our visual processing, we have actually a rise in VPUs, which is a vision processing unit which is being used to develop, to speed up machine vision tasks, such as CNNs, which are convolutional neural networks, and are SIFT. By, and it does this by directly interfacing with the camera and emphasizing data flow between parallel execution units and scratch pad memory. And they focus more on the low precision fixed point arithmetics that give us better digital image processing there are many way difference from GPUs because their memory architecture has been designed to manipulate bitmap images on off-chip memory. Some examples are this, of this are the ability to read textures and modify frame buffers with random access patterns. VPU has a very promising future in the market of robotics and regular computer vision because new types of digital cameras that can consist of virtual reality and augmented reality. And it's also a new machine vision technology for mobile devices. And as you can see for visual processing, image processing, the future looks very, very bright. Well, I hope you learned something from this video. If you wanna take the time to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, we'd be very appreciative of that. Thanks for watching and I hope you guys have a nice day.